Today we're gonna play with this mold. It's a little double winged pendant and it's got a little post in there. So we're gonna do some dry painting on this guy. Hang on. Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. I haven't done a dry painting on a silicone mold in a while and I thought I would do that and have a couple projects ready and available for whenever I had some leftover resin. Let's see if I can zoom you in on this one. Let's see, are we focused? Yeah. Has a hard time white on white and silicone's, you know, very subtle and stuff. Oh, my fingernails look awful. That's what happens when you do a lot of painting and such. Okay. So you can see here, there's a lot of texture in this mold. There's a little post there for the hole, uh, for the pendant. But I think these will look really nice when uh, doing some dry painting. And I kind of gravitate towards molds like this. It has a lot of little pockets where it can catch the mic powders. Yeah, so this would be good. So I've got a couple different colors here. I've got... Ooh, let me zoom back out again. <laughs> All right, I've got a bright gold from Just Resin, and this is their powder one. I have to be very careful in using this because it can take over. Um, I've also got some of Erica's um, mica powders. Uh, so she's got some chameleons, and this is Dalmatian, and I made sure that I got some with some labels on it to make it a little easier for you guys. Okay, and then the other one is Mother Knows Best. So these two have a slight let me do this one so it has a two color kind of effect with chameleons when you move around the piece you'll get two different colors and then this one goes in and out from a i believe it's like a reddish to golden it's only showing the gold right now trust me they do magic okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to paint these guys on the mold and have it ready for whatever i have left over resin and these guys show up really, really good with black. And I know I'm going to be doing some black today. So that's why I want to paint these molds up and have them ready. So let's get started. And I got to take off the tape first. So I'll come right back. Okay, I'm back. All right. I got all my supplies set up. Now I want to talk you through what I'm planning on doing. So the Dalmatian one looks like the lighter toned one of the chameleons. And I'm going to do it in this zone here. And then the mother knows best towards the bottom and then the bo very base of the wing and possibly blending up a little bit. I'm going to put the gold. So that's the loose plan for now. And um, I guess we can just jump on in and get started. I'm using uh, silicone brushes that uh, to dip into the pigments. They seem to grab it pretty good and be able to spread them around. Uh, rather nicely I prefer them uh, some people use regular brushes so it's up to you I've got uh, two different sizes here is like a medium and a tiny one and I'll try to put the links down below to some some brushes if you're interested but um, I have one of my little bitty cases left over from um, this is not grumpy I was hoping to use this for something else it's a new color by the way yes anyway so this was a uh, uh, a used up case before I got the one with the label in it. Yay! So I'm gonna see if I can scrape every little bit of this out because you know this is sold by the gram. <laughs> so we are gonna get in here and pick this up and you're probably gonna be able to see the color because I'm picking this up with a uh, a brush that has a black silicone head to it and I bet it'll show up nicely. Isn't that just a whole mess of fun. All right, so I'm just trying to scoop every little bit of this out. She has this in bags that she scoops out with this little measurement uh, scoop or measurement spoon. And I don't know how she deals with it. It's just like, here, you can measure it out. And I was like, uh-uh, I'm not touching that stuff. <laughs> it's going to get everywhere. I'm going to have to pick a white-on-white white powder kind of thing to do this with. Uh, 
it's going to be fun to see on camera. All right. Okay, open. All you need to do is open this on camera and it goes everywhere. That would be sad. I had to use some elbow grease to get that open. Ooh, that's full. All right, I'm gonna try to have that close by so you can see what I'm doing here. I mean, it is as simple as dip and kind of spread it around here. The black is going to go into a lot of crevices, so I'm not looking at total coverage. It's probably going to have some spots that the black de definitely shows through, and I think that'll be cool. Right. I about the size of a quarter. I'm trying to keep in mind of what I'm doing so that way I can duplicate it on the other side. This stuff is super sparkly too. So I got together with her over at Rhonda's place and that's a uh, RK3 Designs. And Marcy uh, Mixed Media Girl was doing a class over there and one of her classes, uh, this particular one was uh, one day of acrylic pouring and one day of resin. Uh, the acrylic pouring, I don't honestly, personally have a whole lot of experience with. I am definitely learning that one, that medium. Uh, I'm at the early stages of that, and that's okay. We can always learn new mediums, and if I don't end up adding it to my normal stuff of playing around with, that's okay, because sometimes going out of your comfort zone to learn a different medium uh, you'll be surprised how often it can apply to what you're already playing with. Um, some of the stuff that I was doing with resin translates over to acrylic pouring. In other words, uh, my dirty pours and stuff like that. Or maybe that's what it started from originally anyway. Okay, I'm done with this guy. So do that label very carefully. And now for Mother Knows Best. Oh, come on, open up. <laughs> this is so tiny. It's almost hard to grab. I'll be back. Here. Here you go. You can kind of see it with the lid. How it moves around. Jeff did a piece, um, he was uh, just goofing off in the background and uh, did a resin piece with um, some of these chameleons where he uh, did some spray painting on a canvas and then um, added some of uh, the uh, chameleons to kind of create an actual galaxy look to it. In other words, a very oval circular thing. And it was really interesting because when you're walking around trying to look at it because it was almost transparent and then all of a sudden it was like boom color when you walked around to the side so if you're like for example if you're standing here on the canvas and you walked around on the table all of a sudden it's like the whole thing turned purple it was really that dramatic sometimes it's subtle sometimes it's it's a boom in your face kind of deal All I am doing is pretty much just applying this color, pushing it into the details right now. In fact, I might even go with a little bit of scotch tape and pick up some of the color from uh, the raised edges. That might look interesting, actually. So that way the black gets in the raised edges. I 
It's much easier to see on camera when you're putting down something that's a gold color. Isn't it interesting how I, when I brought it in from the brush, it goes on the side, it's like there's a little bit of static. And I am just literally pushing it into the crevices. See if I can get some of that off. Nope, I'm just smearing it around. I wasn't sure which brush I was going to use, so I just grabbed the the general ones I seem to gravitate towards. All right, I seem to be a lot heavier handed on this side than I am the other one. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just pushing it towards the front and it'll kind of give a little bit of a blended look just a little bit I'm gonna apply a little bit more on this one I am super zoomed in Applying color to this area and then moving the color down. That's how you can get some blends. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, I'm gonna lid on this so I don't goof up and knock that over. Okay, so I'm gonna get this gold. This one you put in resin, it looks like liquid gold. This stuff is ridiculous. All right, I'm just gonna try and go up around the edge a bit. Again, with all this texture, it is like skipping over stuff. Well, that's how it feels. If I'm worried about contaminating my gold, I could tap a little bit of this into a container and um, dip my brush into that so that way I'm not adding chameleons into my gold if I'm worried about that. And here, I'm since I'm rubbing my brush off so much, I'm not that worried about it. I'm applying it heavy on this edge. Get down this little nook there. Okay. Now that I got it in there, I'm going to just kind of blend it out a little bit. think the gold might push itself to the front and center. I'm not sure, but that's what my thinking is. So you can already tell a dramatic difference of the edge 
and it being darker going to lighter versus having this medium tone that that'll help out with some I hope some contrast a little bit let's see keep trying to make sure that I'm in camera it gets tricky when you get zoomed in so at any rate uh, so me and my buddies got together over at Rhonda's place and so Marcy's doing the class and of course Marcy, me, and Erica, and Rhonda are all really good at resin. And so it ended up being really, really interesting for the resin part of the class, which was the second day. Because, um, you know, I didn't do all the... I was taking her class because I wanted to learn more about acrylics. I didn't do a whole lot of the resin projects, but I did do a couple of them. And it ended up being really helpful for other people because I would take what she was doing and I would go a little bit further kind of like put my own spin on it and that way people got to see like how far you could push this stuff and and Erica ended up doing the same thing and Rhonda was uh on resin day she was walking around and uh, uh giving extra pointers and she actually led a um kind of a group project too which was really cool so we all ended up pitching in and it's like kind of like we had each other's back and stuff and it was really neat so I think that will do so right now this doesn't look like a whole lot but this sucker is going to shimmer like just like crazy and you see how it picks up the blue when I'm moving it around. So imagine what it's gonna look like when it's got a darker color in here. This thing is just gonna just light up. So it's like I almost wanna spread this around on top for no other reason than just why not. It's fun to play with. Anyway. Okay. So um yeah, so what I'm getting at is about the uh the Rhonda and Erica and Marcy and all that is get together with your buddies. Even if you're at different levels of working and being creative, um, it is surprising how much you can still help each other out, encourage each other, and also give that creative environment to do brainstorming and stuff. There's definitely a lot of room for growth and in, in, in that kind of environment. So it was really cool. Um, Jeff was also there and uh, Johnny as well. Uh, Johnny is Marcy's husband and Kenny is Rhonda's husband he was there too for pointers and all that kind of stuff so it's, it's a lot of creative energy I encourage that quite a bit okay I'm gonna put this to the side and wait till I have some leftover resin and I will show you the results of the dry painting later I just finished with my project and I got some black here and I'm gonna try and you know what might just transfer this to a cup. It might be easier. I've got some uh, extra paper cups here. And the cool thing about the paper cups is that you can pinch them and get a little bit more of a pre precise spout. And it helps out with pouring when you get to detailed zones and such. A little bit of black there running on the side of the cup. So yeah, it's just a little simple paper cup, but you see how it gives it a little spout. We're just gonna go in here and gently pour some resin in. Get on both sides of that little post there. You don't always have to go all the way to the top. You can go part of the way. I'm trying to get a nice little there. Going after my cup edge. All right, I have a skewer, bamboo skewer I raided in my kitchen. And I'm gonna just try and get into those points. Very carefully go in. I just touch edges just to make sure you don't have a bubble there 
There's a little bit of a risk of knocking off resin. I'm sorry, uh, pigment. So I'd rather have that than a bubble. If I have too much resin. Nope, I think I got enough. All right. You have to hit it with heat, just barely do it and so fast. Okay, so I'm gonna put this guy to the side and we'll unveil him tomorrow. All right, this came out so good. Uh, you see what I'm talking about as far, let me zoom in here. See what I'm talking about as far as the chameleons and when you put black resin behind it and how they just really light up. And see in there, that's not two different colors on that, that feather. It's just the one chameleon, but because of the way it's shaped, it's catching the light from two different angles. So it looks like we painted with so many more colors than what we actually did. I'm really happy with these. So this resin starts to set fairly hard to the touch at 24 hours. And it's been about 17 hours. So you can see I can still bend this. It's fairly flexible. So this is a good time to pick off any rough spots. Like in your mold, maybe it went over the sides a little bit, or like in the, in the hole here, we got a little bit of rough spots there. It's just really easy time to even just take a pair of scissors to it. Because when it gets to the stage where it gets really, really hard, um, you'll find yourself putting more and more pressure on the scissors and that's when things can go wrong. And I would recommend not doing scissors, but use sander at that point so just a little tip there Later. All right, so hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. Later, y'all.